Let us unite now. Because if we don't unite now, the former colonizer, now neo-colonizer, is going to attack us and we'll never unite. And if we don't unite, they like it that way because we are small and viable states and they'll crush and dominate us. It is those ideas that once again in the context of the East African community emerged in 1999 and we came with the treaty of 1999, East African Community Treaty, which then took effect in the year 2000. But this time round, the leaders, in their wisdom, took the view that the growth of the East African community ought to be incremental. And I invite you who are sitting here and are lawyers to look at Article 5.2 of the treaty which says that this time round we are going to start with a customs union, then a common market, then a common currency, and then ultimately a political union. That is the process that we prescribe to ourselves as the way in which we would grow the East African community. But remember, that even as we were doing this, and this is always the handiwork of bodies that dominate us. We are members of the Commonwealth, and we call ourselves Anglophone. Others are members or speak French officially, and they call themselves gleefully. Francophone. We don't have the Lusophone. We never call ourselves the Swahili phone. No, we don't. So that even mentally and intellectually we are divided in that fashion. Well, not lost on me here, you are saying this is the first multilingual, almost briefly. And there is nothing wrong with that. So we started with a new system saying we have a customs union. Remember we are talking about progress, missteps and opportunities and the future. The question is on the question of customs union, what have we done? Do we have a union beyond the things that we are quick at signing and there is no people in the world that are quick at signing things, Africans. We sign things which we honor and breach. Because if you have a customs union, there should be seamless trade between Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Do we have it? The answer is no, in reality. Do we have a common market? Do we have the same rules of origin? Is it still not difficult to get goods from Tanzania to Kenya? Do we still not argue about whether Ugandan milk should come to Kenya? These are the things that we must ask ourselves when we assemble in the manner in which we are today. Do we have the common airspace that we said we would? No, we don't. Do we have one telephone cord in East Africa? No, we don't. So that when I'm here, I'm on 257. Uganda, 255, 256, 243. This is where we find ourselves. The net effect is that we remain divided despite our promises that we would move in that direction. So that being the case, in the year 2004, the heads of state of the then East African community made a decision that they were going to fast track political union. Their argument was, if we allow ourselves to make these baby steps, customs union, common market, 
and then monetary union and ultimately a political free a political union, we will never reach where we were. So they said, let us fast track it, the political union. And they appointed a committee headed by the Kenyan Fiswil Amatua. And on the 26th of November, they came up with a document which said many things. These are some of the things that they said. That by the year 2005, we shall have a ministerial committee to ensure that we transition into a political union. They say in the year 2005, mark the years. In the year 2005, we shall have a new deputy secretary of the East African community. They said, they did not stop there. They went on and said, in the year 2005, we'll have a ministerial committee. They said that. Then they said in the year 2005, we'll appoint a committee to begin working on the constitution of East Africa. They say that. In the year 2005, they say that we'll free the air skies in East Africa. They say that. In the year 2007, they say we we'll have, we'll have harmonized our primary and secondary school curriculum. They say in 2007. They said by the year 2008, we'll have a referendum on the constitution. They said that. And then they said that by the year 2010, we will have the president of East Africa. They said all that. <laughs> you and me are here, none of them, none. That is how we are good at making promises to ourselves which we don't fulfill. In the intervening period, as I've already indicated, we invited Rwanda and Burundi. Having failed to fulfill all the 11 things that we promised ourselves as three countries. And we did not stop at inviting Rwanda and Burundi, no. We invited South Sudan and we did not stop there. Last year, we invited the Democratic Republic of Congo, the home of Patrice Henry Lubum. And we are not stopping there, we are inviting Somalia, I hope. <laughs> By next year, we'll have Somalia. The more, the merrier, they say. <laughs> that is East African community that we have. So you could see a major misstep with the process of trying to fast track the East African community in the belief that East African community politically unified would become a body that would have the political environment in which it would thrive. But when you look at East African communities, some of the problems that we have is that we have no ideological clarity or clarity on what we want beyond the statements that we make. Let us look at a number of them. Right now, Many African countries, including the East African community, cannot focus on their target because of our membership in multiple organizations. Tanzania today is a member of the East African community and a member of SADAC. In other words, there are certain SADAC things which binds her and which are not necessarily accepted within the East African community. So when Tanzania comes to the East African community, notwithstanding that she headquarters the East African community, she treats with circumspection, lets she annoy Sadat members. The Democratic Republic of Congo is also a member of Sadat and a member of the Central African Organization. 